In this video, there are critical do's and don'ts that I will be sharing throughout as well as towards the end of the video on how you need to configure as well as how you need to store your firearms and your parts to avoid crossing the illegal boundaries of this new rule. My aim is to clarify some of the stuff that I said in my last video that were not totally accurate, but there is a lot to cover in this video, so let's get right back to it. All right, so let's, let's start right here. The rules amended definition of rifle clarifies that the term designed, redesigned, made or remade, intended to fire from the shoulder includes a weapon that is equipped with an accessory component or other rearward attachment that provides surface area that allows the weapon to be fired from the shoulder. Provided other factors as listed in the definition indicate the weapon is designed and intended to be fired from the shoulder. So that is what classifies or constitutes a rifle. Okay, so let's get this out the way. If I chose to register a stabilizing brace equipped as a SBR, do I have to pay the NFA registration tax? And the answer is no, provided that you do it within the 120 days that the ATF has provided or after the publication of the final rule. Got it? So as long as you get it done within 120 days of the publication of the final rule, then you do not have to pay the uh, $200 tax. Does the ATF have a list or a specific brace that classify making a pistol into a short barrel rifle? And the answer is no. ATF regulates firearms designed by the Gun Control Act of 1968 and National Firearms Act. And therefore, in general, ATF does not regulate accessories such as stabilizing braces. So the answer is no. How do I get determination if my brace device makes a pistol in SBR? Well, the answer to that is, in addition to the ATF's commercially available firearms sold with stabilizing braces and common weapon platforms equipped with stabilizing braces that qualify as SBR, any other firearms equipped with a stabilizing brace or rearward attachment may be submitted to the ATF's Firearm and Ammunition Technology Division for classification. Firearms may be submitted to, and then they give you a number on where you can submit your firearm to if you're crazy enough to do that. So. What are the compliance options for an individual in the possession of a firearm equipped with a stabilizing brace, which is a short barrel rifle, after the effective date of the final rule? You can submit the ATF e-form system. You got 120 days from the date of the final publication, which I already stated, but you can submit or you can register your firearm. You can permanently remove or alter the stabilizing brace so that it cannot be reattached and thereby removing it from regulations as a firearm under the NFA basically destroy that joint. That's the option they're giving. You can remove the short barrel and add a 16 inch barrel, depending on what kind of firearm you have and what regulations in that state they have of that firearm. You can turn your firearm into your local ATF office. Eh, don't think that's gonna happen. Ooh. So in my opinion, there's only really one suitable option for me. And that would be to permanently remove the stabilizing brace so that it cannot be reattached. That would be my option. I don't know what your option will be, but th those are the options that you have. So last video, I said something about, you know, keeping the brace in separate compartments because that was something I heard uh, on a reputable channel. I, I apologize for that. But seeing more information on constructive possession, now I understand that you could be getting yourself into a big problem by keeping these items in close Side proximity. Items. So just make that a note. So it's pretty much the same options for everybody. It's just depending on who and what you are, you may have to fill out a different form if you're an FFL. And obviously for a civilian, you would fill out a different form because you're not an FFF. Once the firearm is registered as a short barrel rifle, can I remove the stabilizing brace or attach an item marked as a stock? The answer is yes. The firearm is registered as an FBR and you can change out the brace for a stock or a different brace. Am I required to notify the ATF in advance? You do not need to contact the ATF or the NFA because changing the brace or the stock does not change the configuration of the SBR. However, if the length of the firearm overall has changed, you will need to notify the NFA division. So, next question. If I no longer want the SBR and I remove the brace, do I need to contact the NFA to unregister my SBR with an attached stabilizing brace? It is not required to remove your SBR from the NFTR. However, the ATF highly recommends you notify government service branches that is gsb of the national firearms act division to remove the firearm from the nftr registry all the nftr 
updates should be emailed and then they give you an email number can i register my firearm with a stabilizing brace to my trust yes the answer is yes however the firearm would need to be owned by the trust prior to the date that the final rule is published in the federal register so if it's not done already then you will not be able to do it is there a limit to how many braces i can register the tax forbearance only pertains to firearms with a detached stabilizing brace in your possession at the time that the final rule is published. There is no limit to how many you can register, but owners in possession of these types of SBRs must register them within 120 days of the date of the publication to the federal register. So there you have it. Next question is, if my SBR is made after the date of the publication of the final rule, can I still register it as an SBR for free during the tax forbearance period? And the answer to that, the ATF says no. The registration options available to the possessor of such firearms applies to those possessed on the effective date of the final rule. So no, you cannot, this will not be extended past 120 days. If I attach my stabilizing brace on a rifle with a 16 inch burrow, will the firearm fall within the peer view of the NFA? So now they're talking about if I have a, basically a rifle with a 16 inch barrel, do I have to register that? Generally, it does not say for sure, but it says generally, no. A rifle with a barrel of at least 16 inches would not be an SBR under the NFA regardless of whether it incorporates a stabilizing brace or a traditional shoulder stock. Note, the firearm would need to retain an overall length of 26 inches and not fall into other NFA categories. Firearms with an attached brace device may be submitted to a FATD for a determination. So you send it over to the FATD and they will tell you whether or not. So I guess they pretty much gave you the key. If it's under 26 inches, then it's still gonna be classified as an SBR. So can I legally sell my stabilizing brace to someone who may be interested in making a short barrel rifle, even after the tax forbearance period terminates? ATF does not regulate the sale of firearm accessories. So they were really, really clear on that one. Is the stabilizing brace by itself an item that requires registration under the NFA? No, a stabilizing brace is an accessory and the ATF does not regulate accessories. However, a firearm equipped with a stabilizing brace may be subject to registration if it is an SBR because it is designed, redesigned, made or remade and intended to be fired from the shoulder as described by the amended definition of rifle in the code of the federal regulations and has a barrel of less than 16 inches or an overall length of less than 26 inches. So again, if the gun is less than 26 inches or the barrel is less than 16 inches, either one will classify this as an SBR. So those are some good notes to know. Like you might be sitting up here thinking, oh, I'm good because the barrel is 16 inches. But if the firearm is less than 26, you're still gonna fall under that NFA regulation. Can I remove the stabilizing brace and attach it to another firearm? A stabilizing brace may be removed and attached to another firearm, but all NFA requirements apply if attaching such stabilizing brace configures the weapon into an NFA firearm. So still, you can put it on another weapon, but it gotta be over 16 inches. As long as it's not a firearm that will be classified as an SBR or an NFA regulated weapon, you're good. Okay, it says, if a person has a disability and needs a stabilizing brace to operate the firearm as it was originally designed and intended, do I need to register it? And again, my apologies, but this is one of the things I got wrong on the last video. It says, yes, but only if the firearm with the stabilizing brace is an SBR, meaning it has to be a pistol, not a rifle. If the firearm with the stabilizing brace is not an SBR, it need not be registered and consistent with federal firearm laws may continue to be possessed and used by persons with or without a disability. So that is one of the things that I had to clear up. Again, I apologize some kind of way in my notes. I got that mixed up. Um, and also, I think I, I heard that online. So again, at, right now I have the paperwork right in front of me, so I can't get this wrong. After the publication of the final rule, can a federal firearms licensee sell a firearm and a stabilizing brace in one transaction? Thus, the FFL must first register the SBR through an E-Form 1 and then further transfer on an ATF Form 4. So, what are my options if I want to sell my registered firearm as an FBR with or without the brace? And the ATF says, if you are selling the firearm as an SBR, which is registered in the NFRTR, an ATF Form 4, tax paid transfer will be required to complete the transfer. Oh my God! 
after the 120 days expires, can I continue to possess an unregistered firearm with an attached stabilizing brace that is a short barrel rifle? I think y'all know the answer to that. It doesn't say yes or no, but it says that the National Firearms Act requires registration of all SBRs. A person may not possess an unregistered SBR. So do I have to say yes or no? Because you heard it right there just like I heard. Can I possess a pistol and unattached stabilizing brace? Whew, this is another one that I kind of left some gray areas on. You could do it, but it could get you in a lot of trouble. So pay attention right here. Focus. An NFA firearm need not be assembled to be regulated as such. Y'all heard that. Whether a person may be in constructive possession of an NFA firearms depends on the facts of a particular case. So I wasn't completely wrong, but I didn't explain it in a way that, you know, a person may say, oh, let me take some caution on that right there. Oh, hell no. I said it in a way like, oh, you can keep it over here. You can keep it over there. You'll be fine. And I apologize for that because that's not totally the case. It all depends on what the ATF determines based on how you are storing these two parts. Myself, I would not take the chance. You know what I'm saying? I would not take the chance of trying to hold on to a pistol brace knowing that the ATF would come in and make up their own, you know, scenario and say, this is what you were doing. This is what it was like. You, you, you have this in your possession and you have this in your possession, which means you have possession and control of whether or not it becomes an SBR. So that's a constructive intent. You know what I'm saying? Criminal intent, constructive possession, kind of like the same thing. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm just saying that constructive possession is almost like criminal intent. Correct me if I'm wrong in the goddamn comments, shit. What are the consequences if I intentionally choose not to register my firearm with a stabilizing brace, which is an SBR, and keep it? Unlawful possession of an unregistered SBR is punishable by up to 10 years imprisonment or $10,000 in fine or both. Under code 26 USC 5861D5871. Look it up if you want to look into that further. So, Prior to and after the expiration of the 120 day tax forbearance, can I continue to possess my SBR equipped with a stabilizing brace if I have timely submitted my application to the register? The answer is yes, provided you are otherwise prohibited from possession of a firearm under a federal state law. You may continue to lawfully possess your SBR while registration application is pending with the ATF. While your application is pending, you should maintain proof of submission and evidence of continued lawful possession. So there it is. If the state I reside in prohibits ownership and possession of an SBR, can I still register mine? Mm. Of course, no. I think I answered this one completely correct. The ATF will not approve an application of an SBR that violates state law. So no need. You can just either extend the barrel, take the brace off, or destroy it. I don't think you want to do that. All right. So once the firearm is registered, am I required to mark the firearm since I manufactured a short barrel rifle? They say that in every answer. As long as it's done by 120 days, the possessor is allowed to adopt the markings of the firearm. The maker's marking exception is only applicable to firearms that are registered pursuant to the final rule. If the firearm is a personally made firearm, the possessor must mark in accordance with the 27 CFR 478.92 and 479.102 prior to submitting the e-form one. I ain't doing it, so Number 27 on here, you may want to really, really look into that if you're going to do an SBR, because it sounds like some important shit. So, can a short barrel shotgun be registered during the 120 day tax forbearance? And they say no. The forbearance period is only for SBRs, meaning stabilizing braces only. So, some of the things that I got confused were cleared up in this video. The do's and don'ts that I was talking about at the end of this video is it clearly states that you can still possess a brace and a pistol but if the atf comes in and finds you with both it's a good chance that they're going to charge you with constructive possession and constructive possession means that the firearm does not need to be assembled to be considered an sbr so the critical do's and don'ts is after the 120 days do not be in possession of a pistol that is configured as an sbr hopefully it gets shot down before 120 days but if it does not then please Make sure you make yourself a checklist. Check off all the stuff you need to check off to make sure that each and everything that the ATF obstacle that they've set that you are in the clear of it. And so with that being said, man, I hope this video helped y'all out.
hitting like, hitting subscribe, help the channel grow tremendously, more than you ever know. So please make sure y'all keep that up. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Those that stay ready, ain't gotta get ready, and we out. I'll see y'all on the next video.